Abdul Sattar Edi, famously known as Pakistan's richest man, passed away this month at the age of 88 in Karachi. The beloved figure in the eyes of the poor was a moral compass that united the nation. And it was them in thousands that turned out for his funeral as his body laid to rest. He was given a state funeral with full honours, the first Pakistani in more than quarter of a century to be done so. Among the crowd were representatives of all major political and religious groups, and some of the country's most powerful civilian and military officials. Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif announced a national day of mourning on the day of his death, saying if anyone deserved to be wrapped in the flag of the nation, it was him. But many see it beyond this on a global level, with his work extending to countries beyond Pakistan. Abdul Sattar Eidi was a prominent Pakistani philanthropist, social activist and humanitarian. Born in 1928 in the small village of Bantwa in Gujarat district of the British-ruled India, Eidi was deeply affected by the death of his mother when he was in the prime of his life at 19. He never finished school, but later said that the world of suffering had become his tutor. After migrating to Pakistan in 1947 during the horrific events of the partition of India, Eidi made a living by selling cloth at the Karachi wholesale market. In 1951, he started his own charity, the Eidi Foundation, as a small medical aid centre in Pakistan and ran the organisation for six decades. The Eidi Foundation today runs hundreds of centres across Pakistan, USA, United Kingdom and Australia, caring for orphans, women, the homeless and the elderly. It provides medical and food aid and runs the world's largest volunteer ambulance networks. In addition, it offers services in many other areas, like providing air and marine ambulance services during accidents to shift patients to hospitals, national and international relief, and aid assistance to the victims. The foundation also supplies technical education to the disadvantaged, religious education for street children, consultations on family planning and maternity services, as well as free legal aid, financial and medical support to prisoners and disabled people. Edi worked in the field as long as his health allowed, often standing on the roadside in the southern city of Karachi, where he lived, collecting donations personally. He has often told reporters he owned only two pairs of trademark grey outfits, consisting of a plain long tunic over drawstring pants. Coming from humble origins, he remained a quiet and modest man all his life, which in part was what inspired the nationwide love for him among Pakistanis. Recent Nobel Prize winner Malala Yousafzai said that she nominated Eidi for the prize but says it will still not be a befitting tribute to Edi's services to humanity. She said to do so, everyone needs to carry on his legacy and follow in his footsteps. A recent example of Edi's great generosity is that before his death, he asked his son for his eyes to be donated to a person in need. He once famously said, My religion is humanitarianism, which is the basis of every religion in the world. The legacy of Abdul Sattar Eidi is one of selflessness, kindness and generosity, and truly a great loss for humanity. It will carry on strong as ever, long beyond his passing, as a man who had become the moral compass for a country which has been characterised recently by violence and religious intolerance, and where heroes are hard to come by. Khadija Ahmed, Asia Wired. Joining me now to discuss the legacy left by the late humanitarian from Karachi in Pakistan is Sabine Agha, a journalist and documentary film producer who was one of the producers in the documentary film Defenders of Karachi, which involved the Eidhi Foundation, and Faisal Eidhi, the son of the late Abdul Sattar Eidhi. First, of course, our deepest condolences, Brother Faisal, on the loss of your father. Um, before we go into his legacy, uh, how was Mr. Eidhi personally in terms of what impact has he had on your family? Uh, he was a very simple, humble man. The only thing in his mind was social work. He was a true humanitarian. He never had. He never had. He never had a house. He never made a house. He uh, uh, ourselves 
we his we as we as, as his children were grown in my grandmother's grandmother's home and uh, he had never thought of having a house or a family but he was having a family and uh, um, more than a father more than a more than a more than a uh, um, family member he was a totally humanitarian and all in his thoughts were uh, how to work for the humanity how to work for the people how to work uh, 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 for the mankind regardless of uh, regardless of caste creed color or the language so in terms of uh, his effect on now uh, your organization because he he was he's been a you know massive personality uh, you know over the last uh, six decades uh, what sort of effect will he have on your organization i think uh, in in the beginning i had a thought uh, i and i used to discuss with him that probably after your after after you to this organization will suffer a lot but he said no uh, he his, in his mind uh, in his mind it was uh, it was that this organization will continue and even grow uh uh because in in his eyes i was uh, in his eyes i i was uh, he he was he wanted to give me the responsibility and my mother also my mother, my mother is also uh, working with uh, with me and actually my mother is uh, working and i'm on the right hand of my mother and uh, she she is now in the ether currently but uh, she is taking she is taking part of the organizational activity uh and his the uh, the upper floor of this organization and uh, uh, she is actively working right now but she is not making any men uh, from outside and uh, but she is do, doing a daily routine work but uh, uh, in in his view in his view when he was alive he said this organization will continue and i think uh, he was very optimistic about the future of the organization uh, we're going to bring in sabine now um sabine in terms of the wider effect uh, on the nation uh, how, how how has the nation taken it in the last week or so it is a profound grief and sorrow like for a loved one you lose you know a family member that you lose uh, he was perceived to be a you know a real expression of love for those who were socially considered vulnerable poor helpless downtrodden destitute cd death abdul is a personal loss of everyone there seems to be a sense of deprivation after his demise like many of the people in my circle put it that they are orphans uh, just like you lose a father just like you lose a mother just like you lose your brother your sister a family member he was alive in everyone in everyone here in pakistan i would say i think maybe globally everywhere pakistanis are feeling that they are orphans they have a father figure and how do you respond um, to his critics over the years uh, first i'll bring you, uh, sabine first of all to yourself uh, how do you respond to his critics because uh, of course he has been loved by everyone but there there's been a constant yearly you can say you know campaign against him in terms of his, in terms of his work first first to you sabine abdul he was a very brave and courageous man he was a very proud man as well he took pride in everything that he did opposition to his past process is in a way of working actually made him a fearless and brave man he was never taken down by opposition the more criticism the more opposition he faced the more resolve we could see in his stance and work He, he he was never bothered by anyone he was criticized by half time clergy for his stop from helping and sheltering the abandoned children he was criticized for the kind of donations that he was tracking across the country and across the globe the money he was receiving but nothing stopped him he was above all that i think it's all about practicing what you preach and easy has actually raised that line that fine line between practice and preaching is abdul critiques can only talk but easy walks to the talk and that is a message enough for the critics i believe so brother faizal uh, i'll ask you the same question um 
you've of course, of course recently been in the media in terms of uh, you know the ED Foundation facing a possible decline in donations in response, of course, to uh, the constant criticism on on his on, he, on him as a figure and his organisation. Uh, how do you respond to the critics? Um, do you think they should put a line under everything they've said? You know, now that now that he has passed away. Actually, critics uh, uh, critics have always given energy to A.D. A.D. Sahab, and he was always positive about the critics. And he used to say, uh, "Critics are like uh, uh, we need opposition, so we can at least know our uh, work is being our our work is being done in a better way or not." So he wanted to have critics, uh, and uh, his opposition. His opposition uh, uh, was sometimes, and he never retaliated to them. He he always been silent to its critics, and he he wanted to. He, his his philosophy was his philosophy was that if we uh, if we retaliate to critics critics, then we are wasting the we are wasting uh, our energy and resources. So his his uh, his philosophy was to. Uh, if somebody is criticizing, it's better to it's better to uh, pay attention pay attention to the work you are doing, and uh, by uh, uh, by doing it in a better way, by uh, taking all the uh, mishaps you have been doing, uh, addressing the mishaps you have been doing, and it's uh, he he used to put all his energies and resources in in his own. Uh, into his own work to to do in a better way and uh, in terms of uh, moving to his legacy you now um, of course it's a testament to uh, the late uh, Abdul Sattar Idhi that he was loved by all sections of society even given the honor of a state funeral which is of course first in many years uh, in what ways can people carry on the legacy that he has created uh, Sabine first are you asking me, Abdul? Yes, yes. Okay, uh, I think, you know, the, the legacy that, you know, we can carry on is by believing in and practicing Edi's ideology, which was actually to serve humanity irrespective of any distinction. He took care of humanity irrespective of caste, creed, religion, class. He literally served humanity from cradle to grave. So that's uh, what we can follow, what the people can follow. He was not an educated man, Abdul, but he did not regret it. Uh, during one of his interviews that I took, he told me that he does not regret being educated, as most of the educated lack humanity. So that is actually the legacy. He was selfless, helped everyone. He considered humanity to be the greatest above all religions, which is actually not a contradiction to any religion, because... What he actually meant was that humanity is the message of all religions. He served common people when he was alive, and even in his death, he served them by donating his eyes. So that is the legacy. If I could, if you could allow me a little more time, I can give you an example from biography, which is uh, Mirror to Blind. And this is actually about an incident when he went to pick up a body which was decomposed, and even the family members uh, were not going near that body. He was the one who reached there. He picked up the body, which had actually maggots and worms in it. He um, picked up the body. He transported it to the morgue, uh, gave a bath to it, and gave a dignified burial to it. And after that, one of the family, the woman family member uh, of that uh, dead man uh, came forward and asked him, who are you? What's your name? So he, when he told her about him, his name, she was like, I will pray to God uh, that he may reward you. He may compensate you for what you've done. So he, that, the, the reply was so astonishing. And so, I mean, I had goosebumps reading that answer. He uh, asked her to pray to God that so Sabine, he may uh, Sabine, uh, I just, I'm just going to quickly ask him the same question. Uh, Brother Faisal, um, in what ways can people carry on the legacy of your uh, late father? I will try my heart, but it's, it depends on the God. If God helps me, I'll be able to do it. Otherwise, uh, I will try my heart and I pray to God that 
he he helped uh, i pray to god that he helps me uh, to keep uh, his mission uh, uh, on uh, he, keep his mission on going and uh, uh, and i also uh, i also uh, i also ask the support of people of pakistan all over the world that uh, uh, please uh, uh, help us in a in a in a morally and financially so we can continue our work uh, of this humanity and uh, elisa's mission should be continued and even uh, his his also his thoughts mr edi's thoughts were that this mission will continue and he he used to also say he used to also that uh, he used to also say that after his after him he uh, the mission uh, the mission will continue and also ex- will expand so i think uh, people are supporting us from all over the world right now we are calling we are receiving uh, different calls uh, from all part of the world from all part of the pakistan and they are giving uh, they are giving the support and they are uh, condoning plus they are supporting and they are encouraging me uh, to continue his work and i think uh, it's a good beginning and i will i believe that it will be uh, it will be uh, not hard to keep his mission continue and uh, uh, i will try my best to do his uh, to do his work i cannot replace him i cannot uh, uh, the level the level and the height he he was he was on he was on i cannot work in that level and uh, i cannot achieve his level but i can uh, I, i'll be trying my best to continue his work Okay, Brother Faizal, um, on that note, uh, of course, we wish you the best in uh, leading the organization into the next uh, uh, decade. 